Alright, what is going on everybody? I hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to be talking about five steps to make your resolution stick. Alright, so we're nearing towards the end of February and if you, if you, you know, if you are the kind of person who hasn't really set their uh, New Year's resolution, then, you know, don't kind of uh, get too hung up about it. It's never too late to set resolutions. Um, but really what, I really what I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about is why resolutions don't stick uh, and, and this whole video is about why uh, resolutions, <laughs> why the resolutions don't stick. So usually by like on the 31st of December we set a, uh, a New Year's resolution, right? <laughs> we, it goes on our head, oh you know I'm going to lose more weight next year. I'm going, oh, I'm going to lose weight next year, I'm going to save more money, I'm going to go to the gym more often. And, you know, and uh, it's, a great, it's a great thought, right? But, uh, you know, um, I'm sure if you kind of go to your gym, you'll see that by the second, if not third week of January. And uh, some of the people will start to actually, um, you start to see all the newbies kind of go, uh, or rather you won't start to see all the newbies in the gym, right? So you'll start to see most of the older people that you've seen before the Christmas and the New Year came on, right? And that's because 90% of the people who set New Year's resolution don't actually make it to February. It's a scary statistics. And this year I haven't really been able to go to the gym as much because of the lockdowns and stuff and because of COVID. So I can't really, can't really vouch for uh, this year being any different than any other year. Um, but I would, you know, every single year that um, in the pre when I've been to the gym, I have seen people, usually by the second week of January, the gyms start to get a bit quieter. So it's a big profit time for the gyms around about January time when people sign up, you know, whether people decide to pay in full or pay in, uh, you know, in installments. And you know they forget about the gym membership, especially those twenty-four hour fitness ones, right? Because they are kind of you know, not very expensive memberships, so people don't make use of them. Okay, so it's like 10, 10 bucks, twenty bucks. People don't bother because it's it's uh, you know don't bother canceling their membership. They just think oh, I'll just make it next week, next week, and then next week turns into next month, etc. So I'm going to talk to you guys about five steps to make the resolution stick, right? Um, so really, a resolution is a uh, kind of it's a promise to yourself, right? That you're going to do better this year than you did last year. We all have like a we all have a gap between where we want to be and where we are, which is why we set a resolution. Okay, so whether it's to do with losing weight, whether it's to do with uh, relationships, whether it's to uh, save money, whatever, right? And that's the whole point of setting resolutions. So. Uh, number one is you've got to have a meaningful goal. Well, goal, okay. And really what that, what, uh, what that means is something that kind of resonates with you deeply, right? So you've got to create emotion behind the goal. Uh, it can't just be like a service level goal. And that's one of the main reasons why people fail with their resolutions because they don't believe they don't set a goal it's like it's, it's a it's, it's a resolution it's like it's something a last minute thought rather than an actual goal okay so you've got to create emotion and meaningful behind the goal so if your goal is to lose weight why do you want to lose weight you've got to be honest about it okay why do you want to lose weight what does it mean to you if you lose weight and what it would it take for you to get that goal? Okay, you've got to be honest to yourself. Because so I've got to tell you guys, um, losing weight is simple but not easy. Okay, simple in terms of the steps that you need to do, but not easy. Because if it was that easy, you'd see everybody walking around with single digit body fats, right? Shirt that's at the beach. Uh, but it's not, it's, it's not that easy. You know, you've got to think to yourself, what would it mean for me to get that goal and what would I have to do? Am I prepared to do the work that's needed to get that goal, okay? And it can't just be like a service level solution because when you set a service level solution, it's not going to get your ass out of bed in the morning, <laughs> put it this way. When it's minus something outside, okay, and it's like five o'clock in the morning and I wake up, you see the snow 
outside and you have to get the snow off your car and or, or your driveway to get out and go to the gym okay you've got to have that meaningful goal behind it you got to have a, a, a big why as to uh, why you want to actually get that goal okay so that you're at you know, so that it gets you out of bed because if a surface level solution is something like okay i want to lose weight because i want to look good in my jeans well yeah great that's a good goal but that's again that's a surface level uh, goal rather not solution a surface level goal and that's not really going to get you out of bed in the morning is it because you're going to think well you know i could just go when it, the weather is better or for example you want to go out for a run when it's cold or go out for a walk okay so um beyond having that meaningful goal okay and something that really resonates with you then you're not going to do it so something like i want to lose weight because i have a family i have a wife i have a a uh, child i have children and it will be selfish of me to shorten deliberately shorten my lifespan by not doing something about it by not losing that weight okay because losing weight's not just about aesthetics not about looking good okay it's about more than that uh you know health health wise anyway okay so you know, think, is, think to yourself, create emotion behind the actual goal, behind the res resolution. What, it would, what would it mean to you to get that goal? If your goal was to save money, what does it mean to you to save money? Will that mean owning your, your own house? If you are somebody who's coming towards retirement and you want to save money, then you know, think, you know, what does it mean to you to have a, you know, to save money? Does that mean I have a stress-free life and not having to rely on your pension or whatever or your savings, right? Okay. And number two is got to make action, make, make specific action steps. Make specific action by the way, sorry about my hand reading this, my handwriting. <laughs> I'm used to uh, using the computers for far too long. All right, so uh, this is, and then, let me ask you a question. When you go and climb Mount Everest, okay, what do you do at the beginning? Do you look right high up and see how high you've got to go, or do you just like look at step by step and see where you need to go first? Right? So if you chose the first answer, Okay, then what's going to happen is you're more, you're more likely to fail at going to your goal because you're always looking at how far you've got to go, okay? So whenever you have a target that's too high to aim at, this is, this is, this, this is the reason why people kind of fail because they don't set small targets. And one of the key, keys with setting goals is to set measurable goals okay so it's getting so it's all well and good setting big goals but also you're going to get small goals as well because you're in charge of the process okay you're not in charge of how fast you lose weight you're not in charge of your metabolism you're not in charge of how much how many calories that you burn from your digestion from your activity etc etc okay it's not the case of going in and cutting calories down to more or less zero and training for 10, 11 hours a day. It doesn't work like that, okay? This is the human body. It might work with uh, every other area in life whereby <clears throat> you save money and you live like, uh, you, you live really poorly, okay? And you save a lot of money, and, but it's worth it in the end. The bot, or you know, you work loads of hours and you spend no money, and that way you get a lot of money. Okay, you save a lot of money. It doesn't work in that way with with the body. So you're gonna get, you gotta set like actionable steps. Okay, so something like something like I'm going to go and train in the gym four times a week for 45 minutes each day. I'm going to go for a walk for 30 minutes every day after dinner. I'm going to eat clean or eat 90% whole foods, okay? Uh, eat whole foods 90% of the time, okay? And that's one, that's the reason why that, that, that's the kind of what you need to do is set, action, spe set specific action steps rather than setting, just looking at big goals. 
And one of the reasons why, if you look at horse racing, they then got the carrot right in front of the actual horse, is because all he can see is focus on that actual carrot, nothing else. And they close their eyes as well, so they can't see the horses next to them. All they see is that target, which is that carrot in front of them. Okay. For the for the for the dog, if you guys have got pets as well, when you try and discipline pets, especially dogs, I've got a little dog, so where is he? <laughs> He's outside somewhere. Um, Pepe, come here. He won't come now. He's sitting in the, he's, he's sitting somewhere. Um, yeah. So what the kind of the what uh, dogs crave most is the treat, okay? And they crave the discipline, uh, rather the um, the, the kind of the uh, what's what's the word? Uh, trying uh, trying try to trying to think what the what uh, the word is when you say to them good boy or something. And the praise. That's it. Anyway, I've gone off a tangent. Okay, so um, that, that you, you got to. All right, we're we'll back now. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. I think I had a phone call. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So you got to set uh, specific steps, right, to to achieve your goal. Uh, you know, whether that's walking, whether that's uh, uh, whether that's training in the gym, well, walking, training in the gym, uh, nutrition, etc. So preparing your meals in advance as well is another one. Okay, so you've got to sit down and write down the specific steps that you need and think about, okay, what do I need to achieve my goal? I need to wake up at a certain period every single time. I need to prepare my foods in advance. I need to do my shopping ahead of time so that I can get up and have time to go to the gym and spend time with my wife, with my kids, etc., etc., okay? Right, number three, which is really important, is celebrate your wins. Okay, this is a crucial thing because uh, the brain, uh, the kind of, you've got, you got to have a, like a, um, a neuro association with the brain, okay? The brain, it's like, like I mentioned about the dog, the dog likes to have praise, okay? So when he, when he praises the dog for doing something, he'll do it again and again and again. And that's a whole way, we're kind of like the same kind of species, if you like, okay? You've got to wire the brain to crave something, crave a reward for doing something. Because if you're always like setting goals to lose 20 pounds of fat, 30 pounds of fat, it might take you a year, it might take you two years to get that goal, okay? It depends on how, how, you know, how, uh, how long it's taking to get to that stage. Um, uh, and uh, you, you know what you do with your time, etc. So it, it's uh, you got like, that's a, another reason why you should set set yourself a small kind of target. So whether it's this week you've uh, I don't know, so you, you've had, you've cooked all your meals, or you've had you haven't missed a meal, whether you've eaten clean for you know six out of seven days, and you've had a treat one of the days. Whether you've been to the gym four days a week this week, you know, whether you've uh, dropped down a clothes size, a pants size, okay? It doesn't matter as long as you celebrate your wins. So when I say celebration, I don't mean going out and getting yourself like a pizza or something, guys, right? <laughs> or a hamburger or fries or fish and chips or whatever. Okay, it doesn't work this way because then all you do is, is kind of like, uh, is uh, counteracting what you're trying to, uh, what you're trying to do, at the, uh, you know, when you're trying to lose weight. So, you know, something like buying a leather jacket that you really want, uh, going on holiday, um, go and see your favorite football team, you know, baseball team, um, basketball team, whatever, right? Anything, nothing, anything, not to, not anything that isn't to do with food. Okay, so that's the most important part is to celebrate your wins to get the brain to fully associate achieving something with it, because then you kind of like it. It becomes like a balancing act because then you kind of think, well, okay, I've got a year to achieve my goals and you get bored quite easily, okay? It doesn't matter about your conscious brain, about your subconscious brain and training your subconscious brain to become conscious and crave of that achievement because if you're like waiting 20, 30, uh, rather 10, oh, start again, one year or so to lose 20, 30 pounds, okay? It can be a long time without having some kind of reward and 
you kind of feel like bottled up, right? So make sure that you celebrate your win, all right? So we're basically gonna encourage you to keep going. Number four is think long term. All right, so what I mean by thinking long term, so as I mentioned in the previous, uh, in the previous point, okay, it might take you a year, it might take you two years. A lot of people give up because they don't see changes in their body straight away, okay, they don't see the summer going from here to there. Well, let me tell you guys, you're not going to get lean overnight, okay, you're not going to get, to lose 20, 30 pounds in the space of one week, two weeks, you're not, if, if you know, if it, if, if everybody that had a bad meal, okay, one meal and it, it took them, like they gained weight, okay, or if everybody went to the gym one time, they lost the weight, then it, it, it would be so easy, okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't, work like, it doesn't work like that. So you probably got to that stage because you were overweight, you ate more and you didn't exercise for a period of time, okay, or you ate a lot more than you exercised, okay, so kind of the balance was skewed somewhat, okay, so it's not the problem, the problem wasn't that car you ate too many carbs, the problem wasn't that you ate too much, too much fat, the problem wasn't that you had uh, too many processed meals, the problem wasn't that you had one beer, okay, the problem, is, or, or one glass of wine, or, uh, you know, you went out twice last week, it's a combination of everything, okay? So everything put together over a period of time that has culminated in this, in what you just had. So basically it's a combination of micro decisions, okay? Which has resulted in a macro outcome. So what I mean by a micro decision, say that, okay, you want to, to uh, eat at that takeaway today, all right? And then tomorrow you decide to skip the gym. And that's a micro. That's a micro decision. The the takeaway was a micro decision, and then the next week is another micro decision to uh, skip the gym and to eat more and to have three. Let's just say you wanted to have one glass of wine and then you had four glasses of wine. That's another micro decision. So you created a macro outcome which has resulted in your increasing your weight. Okay, so. You know, we, we kind of become a nation of instant gratification, okay? So you, you won't want something straight away. We want a book, you can go to Amazon and get a Kindle book in the space of seconds, okay? You can read it pretty much straight away without having to wait. Uh, Amazon Prime will deliver some, in some places uh, same day delivery, okay? Uh, in, in, in most cases, it's next day delivery. You want to try a workout and then you go on the internet and download the workout. Okay, buy a program and you can do it straight away. Um, you want gym membership, you go and apply online and do it straight away. Even with some, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, train, uh, airline tickets. You can buy an airline ticket pretty much straight away and go on holiday that very, that very day. All right, so... You know, progress is never linear. I you know, I, I know we kind of everyone wants to, like doesn't want to hear it and thinks that it's going to be a straightforward thing. It's not straightforward. It's uh, it's always going to be a while before it actually uh, be, before you start to see some changes or other. You know, because the changes are going to happen if you you know you just got to focus on the process and the outcome is going to come. So if you if you you know focus on the stuff that you can control. Okay, and you're going to start to see changes eventually because the process is going to lead to the outcome rather than focusing on the outcome the whole time because then you get like sidetracked. Okay, so go back to the horse analogy rather than getting the horse un, um, unmasked, right, if that's the right term to use, and, and get them to look left, right, and center. And everybody, they focus straight ahead and focus on the actual carrot that they have in front of them. Okay, so. Focus on the process, and then the outcome is going to, is going to uh, the outcome will actually come through because you've you know you're doing the you're doing the right stuff. You're just going to have faith. You know, you've got to tough it out. You've got to think positively and think, yeah, the changes are happening. The changes will be happening inside, but you just can't see them. 
you're not going to wake up overnight and you know the next day and see that you've got you know whoosh my stomach is, is banished okay it's not like you're winning the lottery one day you're like got this much money and the next day you play the lottery and you well, like you've got many millions okay it doesn't work like that with weight loss so as long as you start thinking you think long term and think yeah it's going to take a while to get you know be prepared to tough it out then you'll you'll be all good all right so point number five final point is enlist a taskmaster list task all right so what i mean by a taskmaster somebody that you can be held accountable to okay so whether that's a friend whether that's a partner whether that's a coach or it's a mentor there's a reason why the best performing players in the world such as like sports world let's just take sports okay we got uh, uh, Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal. All these players are top three tennis players in the world, okay? And they've all been number one at some point. Uh, I don't know who's number one at the moment. I've not been following it closely th uh, this year. Uh, I think, is it Novak Djokovic? 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 Is that, the way is that how you say it? Djokovic, that's it. I think he won the Australian Open, didn't he? So um, I think he's number one. Um, so yeah and there's a reason why these guys are the best players in the world they have a coach tiger woods has got a coach okay michael jordan had a coach the even the president of the united states has got some he's accountable to someone okay so we all have some kind of accountability to someone in our lives you know at work, when we go to work we're accountable to someone um uh, but like if you uh, if you have your own home right if you pay mortgage on your home you're accountable to the bank or to the building society if you're somebody like in the UK right or to whoever gave you the loan because you've got to pay back that loan so we all have some kind of account accountability and we perform better when we have somebody who we're accountable to say that you and your friend are going to the gym okay the next day or Let's just play out two scenarios. Scenario one is you going to the gym on your own. Scenario two is you going to the gym with your friend. Okay, you wake up tomorrow and you kind of haven't really slept that well, or you had a late night, or you just don't feel like going to the gym. Are you more or less likely to go if you're on your own, or are you more likely to go than we you are with a friend? Well, you're more likely to go if you had a friend going because you're gonna you don't want to let that friend down, and you you are accountable to that friend. Okay, so that friend is gonna push you on, is gonna hold you accountable. Whereas if it's just you on your own, then you're just gonna think, oh no, you know I can't be bothered to go on your own. I'll just go the next day or the day after or whatever, right? So accountability is always the best way to actually achieve something. Uh, you can do something that that is called loss aversion. What loss aversion means is basically that you pay money to somebody or an organization or whoever, right? Uh, if you don't do something. So for example, if you don't go to the gym four days a week, you say to your friend or uh, somebody, uh, anyone, right? You say, right, um, somebody in the office, for example, I'll give you $20 every time I don't go to the gym. The bigger the, uh, the uh, kind of the, the loss aversion, the more likely that you're going to do it. So nobody wants to lose money, right? You don't want to lose money. I don't want to, I don't want to lose money. Um, and basically, <laughs> and basically you, when you set a, uh, a financial, like uh, when there's money and uh, when there's like there's money, uh, on the line okay you do not want to lose that money believe you me there's even a website that you can actually put your credit card details in and they will hold you accountable to doing something you can even donate money to a political party I know nobody likes politicians <laughs> all right so you can give money to a political party of your choice if you fail to do something Okay, if you fail to go to the gym or you fail to make to uh, uh, prepare your meals in advance or whatever, right? So that's uh, that's the power of accountability. All right. So when you outsource motivate when you outsource like motivation is limited. Okay, motivation is out. It's uh, it's kind of overrated. Willpower is very very limited. It's like a muscle. Okay, it gets fatigued with every single decision that you make 
Okay, so you come home at the end of the night and you see a slice of pizza there and you haven't eaten or you kind of at work and you haven't really prepared your food and you see the vending machine. Which one are you going to choose? Stay hungry or go to the vending machine? You're going to go to the vending machine. All right, so that's, that's kind of really what I'm, what, what, I, what I'm trying to say with regards to uh, having a, a mental kind of coach is you're going to get results faster by having a mentor, having a coach, or having an accountability partner, okay? Um, and by the way, the kind of like, if you decide to give that money to your wife or uh, or a girlfriend or whatever, right? It kind of like somebody close, family member, it doesn't work because it's, it's like rewarding a family member and it's not the same feeling as giving it to somebody who you don't really want to give it to, right? So you can even make a bet with a friend of yours, say so like, okay, I'll, if I don't go to the gym four days a week, I'm going to give you like, you know, $100 or $20 or $50 or whatever, whatever money you can afford, right? It doesn't have to be a massive amount, but it just sets something in your brain to not lose that amount of money. All right, so final thing is imagine i want you guys to kind of imagine a year from now that when you achieve your goal what would it feel like how would you feel okay what would life be like when you finally achieve that goal that you set yourself whether it's losing 20 pounds of fat whether it's uh you know becoming healthier whether it's saving all that money okay think about it and all you need to do is spend five minutes a day close your eyes and just have a vision of where you want to be. Chase that feeling, imagine what you're gonna feel like. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today. Ch chase that feeling, take action, go, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.